and now a prayer from some of those we've met today. Lord God, your spirit of wisdom fills the earth and teaches us your ways. May we welcome the stranger as you have welcomed us. Help us to act now for the good of future generations. And let your light shine through us as we walk through our journey of life. Amen. Well, I hope you've enjoyed exploring the Christian stories, past and present, here on the Isle of Man. I've loved being here. We're going to end back at the cathedral with what is, perhaps, one of the most famous of all Manx hymns. Until next time, goodbye. of Praise is back next Sunday at the usual time of 1.15 on BBC One. Got mine too. No, doesn't look very good. Now, uh, this week, a BBC investigation revealed that more than 8 million people in England are on antidepressants. That's 1 million more than five years ago. The number of people requiring help for their mental health is increasing and waiting lists are at an all-time high. My next guest has first-hand experience of dealing with mental health crises uh, as former chaplain to the Archbishop of Canterbury from 2017 to 2020. She ministered to Justin Welby, who up and up about his own struggles during this time. Uh, she's co-written a book about the Christian approach to mental health and how the church and community can help to fill the gap between the crisis and services. Welcome, Reverend Dr. Isabel Hamley. G good to see you. I, I, as I mentioned there, you were the chaplain to the Archbishop of Canterbury when he began to talk openly about his mental health and the struggles that he was having. Was, was this a surprise? Did he sort of turn around one day and say, look, uh, Isabel, I'm really, I'm really having troubles here? 
Uh, this wasn't really a surprise. We'd been working together for a long time, but we talked carefully about whether he should open up and how he should do that, because we felt that there was a real need to break down stigma. There still is that sense, I think, in wider culture that to have a good life or a successful life, you need to be together and that, you know, you shouldn't struggle. And it felt really important that for somebody in his position to open up and say, actually, I really struggled with my mental health was, was a really important step step in breaking down that sense of stigma and to say, actually, all of us struggle yeah. at some point. And, and when people like that show the vulnerability, mm. it really helps other people who are struggling and maybe perhaps yeah. keeping in. And look, my son has OCD. And um, when he first fell ill, I remember thinking as a Christian, oh, maybe, maybe I, it was only a small part of me, but just in the back of my mind thinking, oh, maybe I need to pray hard or maybe I, you know, I didn't do mm. this. Or, or, and actually, he got help through the NHS. He got uh, treatment and medication mm. and, and therapy. And, and then... I, I don't know, maybe I was reading into it too much, but I remember meeting Christian friends and just getting the sense that they thought, well, actually, you could have done it through prayer. It, it could have been your faith that could have helped it. That is a thing I think a lot of Christians who are dealing with people who are struggling with mental illness they face, isn't it? I think it can be because people sometimes have this view of God as if God is like a, you know, Father Christmas somewhere in the sky. And actually, that's not quite, that's not quite a Christian God. And, and all of us struggle with stuff during our life. I mean, you wouldn't say to somebody with cancer, you know, well, if only you prayed harder. Some people might, but I hope they wouldn't. And, and mental health struggles are no different. These you can go to, it's possible to, to make hospitable spaces. Let's talk about this and let's listen to one another and, and just look at every person as a whole person. Don't reduce them to a label about their mental health. So basically I work in hospitality and I do a bit of barista work as well. Yeah, so I, and it's really interesting because seeing Makeda just before we started filming this, you're glowing. I can Thank see you. you're glowing and you're really positive. You're like, oh, I want to evangelise yeah. about this. Yeah, so literally. You, so you've gone on to do other things. Yes. It's not, you're not just doing Bristol. No, so I do hospitality work as well, yeah. Okay, and I study as well, so they've supported me in my studies as well. Yeah. Wow. You, yeah. <laughs> you're doing a lot of things, jumping yeah, a lot of balls. Literally, yeah. <laughs> I guess it's changed your life really, hasn't it? Yeah, it is, totally. It's remarkable. Basically yeah. from where it's been taken back, I have my home, but I'm actually, uh, oddly enough with this lot, I'm going to re go and retrain to be a palliative nurse. Yes. You're going to be a palliative nurse. nurse. It's like a, it was something I thought of like a, a quite a few years ago when my mother was ill and things like that. It's been great to chat to all of you. Thank you so much for sharing your story and where coffee can take you. Thank you. I'll, I'll get mine to go though. <laughs>
and I, I just felt hopeful. Get your underwater goggles tonight as we dive deep at seven to see Spy in the Ocean.